Hey, hey, folks. Today we're looking at... I want to look at a little piece of hardware that I'm, sort of gets talked about, but not enough. It's an interesting... I guess it's Oddware, if you call it, which is, of course, Commodore's Magic Voice speech module. This is a piece of kit that originally came out in 1984 for the C64 and is, as the name suggests, a, a speech module for the trusty bread bin. The idea being that this plugs in the expansion port and... Uh, gives you capabilities that, you know, let programs deliver speech to you. Now, you know, it's a similar approach to things like the IntelliVoice for the Intellivision console, the speech hardware that the TI-994A used, um, and the BBC Micro, and a whole bunch of other ones, you know, Cura Micro Speech and whatnot. But this, of course, was, was also one that was first party, being by Commodore themselves, and they had a lot of high hopes for it. And, you know, and so fundamentally... It didn't quite go down that well, which is why it doesn't get talked about that much. And there's sort of a bit, of, a little bit of interesting things about it. Like people probably heard about what it means and what it offers. Not much. Uh, and I picked up this sealed unit uh, a few years ago, and I thought it'd be nice to actually open her up, get inside, take a look at it, um, fire up the C64 with a connected, have a quick poke around with basic show off a couple of games that do support it, and go on from there. So really, one of the big things about the about the Magic Voice is that it was designed in a, in a way that was similar to um, TI's speak and spell on quite a number of levels. Um, part of that is no surprise, because Commodore actually poached engineers from TI to do it. Um, they, they, had, they, ran, they ran for at least a year or so, uh, a team down in Dallas... Texas that were involved with this and they were people who started, people who are XTI. Um, and so, you know, the big thing with the way this works is it's based about um, a process where it's recorded, words are recorded and we'll flip around the back as we go around. So you can sort of see the front, you know, you just got this nice little animation and the, I apologize for the glare from the shrink wrap, you know, use of Commodore's growing family of talking software on cartridge or disc or write your own. And so you get a nice little representation of what the unit looks like. There's a lot of Commodore gear that, like audio stuff that used that design too. But yeah, we flip around the back and we've got just a, you know, bit of description, pardon the glare, of what's in there, the vocab, the speech rate, you can control all this stuff, you know, program in basic or machine language, you know, simultaneous voice and music generation. So one of the things is this actually takes this doesn't actually use the SID output to do its own thing. It does its own output and we'll see when we come to get inside. You know, compatible with the C sixty four and SX sixty four and talking cartridges. Uh let's just say the number there There were only three cartridges released and I've got two of them here. And then of course you've got majority of the boxes really taken up by the list of the phrases and numbers. So the idea is um you can either tell it to say a particular word, which is listed here, or um, give it that number. And we'll show you that when we get to poking around. So let's get the old multi-tool out and play Cut the Shrink Wrapped. Of course, you know, we want to be responsible and cut away. So there's that section down there, that section here, and that section over here. Oops. That section here. And... That should be able to get us through, right? We can throw that off. There we go. Oops. There is a Magic Voice speech module now. Freed of its shrink wrap prison. So let's open her up. So inside we've got a manual, which is probably going to reiterate most of what you talked about. Copyright 1983. It's interesting. I, I was doing some walkthroughs um, in sort of getting a bit more background and history and... Even though that copyright is 1983, it didn't release until 1984. It was first announced at the January Winter CES, um, you know, along with the, the Plus 4 and C16 or the 264 line. Um, of course, it's worth noting the there was also the V364, which was going to be part of that line, and that was going to have this Magic Voice uh, hardware built in as well. So anyway, the instruction is pretty much... Uh, what you expect, you just, it gives you, you know, how to use it, how to set it up, and some example programs and whatnot. So, 
user manual, pretty much as you'd expect. We've got, then we've got this cable, which is, oh yes, it's the five pin, it's, it's a five pin DIN cable on one end and your, your jack on the other. So the idea is you basically plug the CZD4's AV output into the magic voice. And now I've got the unit itself here. We'll grab that and have a look. So, ooh. Anyway, so what happens is you basically plug, so we can have a look. We get up there, we can see that we've got an in and an output RCA jack. The idea is you plug your cable into your CCD4's monitor output, the video, the video port, and you route that into the in. You route the audio into the in. You then route the audio out into your, your monitor or TV or whatever. Now that means for me, it's gonna be basically routing that into you know, an, an upscale. So you can sort of see the unit itself. Oh, there we go. At least 14,000 of them. Um, many Hong Kong. As you can see, interesting car, interesting design there with the car port. Oh, let's bring that up. The way that that's gonna plug in always looks a bit weird, especially when you, well, surprise, compare it with an actual Commodore cartridge. But I think it's like, as it goes in, it, it clamps down. It's just a bit weird. I think the other C64 sort of modules do that as well. But anyway, you get you know, nice charcoal-y black. It's a bit, it sort of looks like an extended cartridge. You know, Commodore Magic Voice, and you've got a pass-through cartridge slot, because the idea is um, you'll have this sitting in your machine most of the time, and then when you want to run a Magic Voice supported program, spoilers like Gorf, you plug it in like this. So this will sit in your C64 sort of like that, and Gorf will be in there and running. Let's pull that out. And so, in terms of the software that does work with it, Gorf is one, Wizard of War is the second. Unfortunately, I have all this cartridge of that. Come on, get in focus. Wizard of War is the second, unfortunately. There's also a third called ABCs. Um, and I've seen that in action um, at a meet. Someone actually has it. Unfortunately, I've not. I know it's it's. there's the Magic Voice Classics pack for the 64, which is an easy flash cartridge that actually emulates this stuff and so you can play that on you know a 64 and easy flash cart or a 1541 ultimate and whatnot um so you got all that anyway so that's the magic voice itself it's a very interesting little thing so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put this to the side i am going to set up my c64 we're going to plug the magic voice in and we're gonna poke around with basic and play Wizard of War in Gorf and show those in action. So uh, we'll be back in a moment to check that out. Okay, so I've got the CCD4. I've dug my, my original CCD4, not my reloaded workhorse. And we'll go set the magic voice up, obviously. The magic voice is a cartridge as we sort of showed in the first bit. And so that needs to go in the expansion port like so. Uh, it's gonna be a little cramped, but there it goes. Nice, eh, fits good enough. The next thing we need to do is we need to connect the AV. So the big thing with the Magic Voice is what it does is it takes the audio in, it takes the audio output from the SID, puts it in the input, then you take the audio output of that, which mixes it and feeds it into your monitor or whatever. So in my case, I am going to use this for my retro tink. So oh, where's the cable? There it is. So I'm going to take this. Does mean I'll need to be careful when I process it, so we'll just put in the white jack. And that's the output, which we check underneath. Yeah, so output is at the rear, and so we'll put this cable in the rear because it's the output. Put the CT4 back down. Feed that up the back a little cleanly, especially because we don't want to get the cartridge, get it in the way of the cartridge, and we're good. So the next step, is we need to grab a CCD4 video cable. So I've got my main S video cable that I use. And so what we need to do with this is plug it into the computer like normal. Grab the S video portion, wrap that around the back and into the retro tank. Ooh, so I'm gonna snag my watch, that's not good. It's never good when you snag your watch on something. Um, and a little dot thing always goes at the bottom, so. 
I admit this is this setup is a little is not the the he's not the best setup. Unfortunately, um, you know this space that I would work with in this secondary site is probably not the best for actually doing what we need to do. And of course, we have the white audio the white the white RCA jack and plug it into the magic voice which means we don't care about the red jack, which is the other audio channel, and we don't care about that yellow one because that's actually a composite video. And so the CCD4 is connected. So what I'm gonna do now is um, turn the monitor on, and we get our standard boot screen. So, right now, we've got CCD4 basic, and in theory, the magic voice should be ready. So I'm going to type in That's probably why. Hi. Let's turn up a little more. Hi. There we go. The magic voice is up and running. Um, you should see capture live capture feed on top, and we'll know that that's now running. So let's let's just I'm just going to follow some of the stuff in the manual, particularly this little sample program here. So let's just punch that in and see how we go. So say. The Commodore Computer is terrific. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so let's Let's look at this. So one of these things about, uh, all right, let's type another listing. One of the things that's real interesting as a quirk is you actually can't say a sentence when you're stringing together, when you're stringing together something. So when I say, oops. Now watch this. Commodore computer. So you can see you can't actually string that together in a in a sentence. Um, you've got to sit down and do it a word at a time, which really is a bit is a bit is a bit fiddly. Like let's let's have another let's have another look at one. So. Oops. I gotta look at the I think I have to look at this keyboard actually. So let's run that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's, oops. All right. There's a few other examples here. Um, we'll just keep flicking through. And the, the manual's all right, like it tells you this. The one thing that's very annoying is that if you accidentally, um, uh, if you accidentally like call the wrong word or you, you have a program accepts input it kind of messes up so well let's try let's try another listing here um, this one's a bit larger so what I'm going to do is probably just fast forward it while I type it in and we'll have a play when it's done
Four, four, eight, two. Hey. Seven, eight, thousand, eight hundred, seventy, five. Four hundred, twenty. Well, there you go. Um, I made some silly assumptions about that, but you can sort of see what's happening. Well, let's go. Six thousand, five hundred, eight, eight, one. So you can sort of see what the magic voice is about, at least for what it brings to programming in basic, which, yeah, it's not the most exciting thing I know, but still, you can do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna power down, I'm gonna pop in, I'm gonna grab a joystick, pop in some Wizard of War and some Gorf, have a play of those and show you what that's like, and then I think we'll wrap things up there. So I will be back in a moment. You are faithful here on my ha 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 ha. Alright, take two. You got the game literally crashed. If you get too powerful, I'll take care of you myself. Ha 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 ha. You get the heavyweight, ha 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 ha. Keep going and you will find me, ha 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 ha. Go war and go war, become invisible, ha 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 ha. It's got to be said, the quality here, even though it's a little, it's a little rougher. It's just a quite listenable. It's actually a really good way to play the game. Um, I've always maintained that this is probably one of the best versions of Wizard of War. Because as it is only one of the few that did offer the speech.
はははは、いいでいい。Come back for more with that wizard of war. はははは。Get ready for your. So that's Wizard of War, which is the first of the two games that got released. Blow war and blow war become invisible. Ha 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 ha. Well, yeah, that's the first of the two games, Wizard of War. I'm going to switch over to Golf, so I'll be back in a moment. And so we've got Golf, which is, of course, the other game that supports Magic Voice, and you heard it churned out. They use a little less chatty than Wizard of War.、Um, I mean, I love how chatty Wizard of War can be, but you know. <laughs> One thing I do love is that actually it does acknowledge the difficulty. That's what you play with it. I love it brings the difficulty level in. So, you know, currently I'm playing at Space Cadet level and it acknowledges that. Kind of like that. And, you know, that's of course what the original arcade game did. So, it's not, you know, it's not something specific to the, to the 64 version. You cannot get i n t i d e of being r o b o t Ha ha ha. Okay, well, that's game over of Gorf, and so you could sort of see what he was doing there. Not much, not as vocal as, Miss,、uh, as Wizard of War, but it's a nice little touch anyway. So that's really what I really want to show off for the Magic Voice. Well, I'm going to talk about some conclusions, so I'll cut to that in a moment and leave it there. So, yeah. So, the Magic Voice, which it's, it's certainly one of those pieces of kit which is really a. Odd wear, as I, like to, as I like to borrow the term.、Um, you know, s- s- voice synthesis really was sort of happening a lot, you know, in hardware, as I sort of talked in the opening bit, you know, the Intellivision, the BBC Micro, and a bunch of other stuff, a lot of work by TI. But of course, you know, it's sort of a flop for a lot of reasons, I think. Part of it is it really didn't, it really had a limited vocab. Like, there's 230 words in there that don't really offer much. Beyond, you know, it's the very basic stuff.、Um, sure, you could integrate a few own programs, but, you know, you had to have the cart. And this, back in the day, its launch price was like 60 US dollars, which quite a bit now. 
Um, and yeah, it doesn't really offer it enough. Commodore, I guess it flopped pretty quickly. Commodore shut that stu- that division in Texas down in 84, obviously amongst a whole bunch of other problems. Um, the V364, of course, was scrapped when they refocused the 10 machines to just the 116, C16, and plus four. And really, there wasn't, there wasn't much to go with it. Um, so it was a bit of an experiment. And of course, let's not factor in things like, you know, Sam was already out by this point, in fact, debuting a bit earlier, um, and did it all in software. And then, of course, you have the work from electronic speech systems, which you're certainly familiar with if you're a dedicated C64 games player. You know, their work was used in games like Impossible Mission and Ghostbusters, Beachhead 2, Kennedy Approach, and more. And eventually, you know, plenty of other speech systems were integrated, you know, software, playback over the SID, you know, when the SID could do some, when playback of samples was discovered that this, you could you could fake it on the SID, well, you had, you had those techniques to do it. So the magic voice is really a bit of odd way. I mean... As I said, for me, I originally got it prior to learning about the the Magic Voice um, Classics Collection. And so, realistically, I was going to use it to play Gorf and Wizard of War, which I you know, had both carts off for quite a long time. But, well, I can just load them up on my 1541 Ultimate and enjoy them there. Um, and that's actually quite a neat way to enjoy the pack for what it's worth. But at the end of the day, it's still a cool little oddity, and I thought it'd be nice to set it up, show it off, and actually crack the seal for once because it's been sitting in my in my cupboards, uh, you know, shrink wrapped for heck knows however many years. Um, I think that's really all I want to say about the Magic Voice. It's really an odd piece of hardware that doesn't have much use. That's superseded, and really, if you want speech on your C sixty four. Play with Sam, um, superior software speech, which you know Commodore format readers at least in the later years of the mag, would be familiar with, and so much more. Um, So really, I just want to say, I hope you enjoyed this look at it. I'm going to wrap things up here. As always, if you enjoyed the video, do hit the thumbs up. Word of mouth really is essential to helping the channel grow. So if you you enjoy it, why not tell your friends? Uh, If you haven't already, consider consider hitting the subscribe button so you can get more chilled examinations of old games. Games new and old for old hardware and interesting little bits like this into your sub box, nice and chilled, you know, no no silly YouTuber stuff, just just chill enjoy. Special thanks as always go to my channel, my channel's Patreon supporters. These folks really do make it happen. Um that really help support the channel, me being able to put out more great videos like this as always. And lastly and most importantly, as always, thank you all ever so much for another voyage beyond the scan lines.